I've been doing some soul searching lately as a YouTube critic. As many of you guys know, the goal of this channel is to provide unique and concise video game content in an honest and straightforward manner, to be unbiased and fair. Video games, they deserve to be critiqued objectively. That's the first responsibility of someone in my shoes. While it's not possible to be, you know, entirely objective, what is attainable is some semblance of neutrality. It's not easy, but with practice a critic can get to that place. For me, I do get there by doing three things. Refraining from pre-release material, abstaining from talking to others about video games to obtain popular opinions, and three, taking the time to step back from the material I write. This is the most critical part for me. It's an exercise in doing things right, to allow myself enough time to write, rewrite, and edit scripts so that I can catch myself on the off chance of being subjective. Rushing videos on YouTube can lead someone to a bad spot, and I don't want to go there. But I found myself there when I put out a video called Buyer Beware Friday the 13th The Game. I've been doing these sorts of pre-release warning videos for the better part of a year now, and the goal is simple to inform viewers on what to expect from the game, and in some cases, caution them against bad games. I only do these videos when I'm offered game codes in advance, so that people can get educated to what they're about to get into. I failed with Friday the 13th, the game. I want to apologize to Gun Media, the company that published the game. I did not treat Friday the 13th, the game, objectively. After re-watching the video, I found myself wondering what in the world got into me that day. I don't sound like myself, and I certainly don't provide fair criticism or explanation for half of the things I say in that video. As someone who considers themselves a critic, if I don't act professionally, then nothing I say should be respected. In this video, I acted like some pissed off fanboy who bought a crappy game and couldn't get a refund. It's not surprising to me that this is my most downvoted video I have ever put out. Objectivity in gaming is acquired by acting with integrity even when being hard on a game. The worst way to go about it is bashing a game while acting like a child. I hate nothing more than a whiny YouTuber, and I almost got to that state in this video, complaining endlessly about pretty much everything in the game. It's fine to critique games and call them out for being trash, but it's another thing to do it aggressively and with a combative tone which can come across as being biased. I made the mistake of not believing in my ability to say that the game was bad and having people take my word for it. It's my goal to become a critic who doesn't have to justify himself, to have an audience that accepts critique the moment the words come out of my mouth. Not to become a YouTuber who has to get riled up, aggressive, and bash games simply because they are bad. If they are bad, I should say that they are bad, explain why, and let that be the end of it. I think that when YouTubers act this way, it's likely that they're self-conscious of their opinion and presentation, or they're just making a mistake. They act out to cover up their own inability to remain rational. After all, it's much harder to be a fair and just critic than to let your emotions get the better of you. I can admit when I get to this place because I know deep down that I'm better than that. That's because outside of YouTube, I'm able to detach from things very easily. During my life, I've learned to control my emotions. My friends refer to me as a natural introvert and a trained extrovert. To the very core, I do understand the word indifference because I do live it. The only time I've ever cried is during the movie The Last Samurai, not because it was sad or somebody died, but just because the music was so beautiful. When I end relationships, I feel nothing. It's not that I'm cold or that I don't care, it's because to the very core I am a very neutral individual and I can separate myself from my emotional state. The beauty of being impartial in this fashion is that it lends to a strong sense of self. In return, I can embrace objectivity by being able to remove my emotions from my state of mind. I haven't perfected it yet, but I'm getting there. Of course I'm a very opinionated person though, I can be very loud and obnoxious in a fun way I think, and I have a love of telling stories and teaching, but I'm a person who can detach from all of that in a very non-partisan way. There's a certain amount of humility that results, and lately I'm being drawn towards it. It's not that I'm being meek or docile or sheepish, it's about letting your character speak for itself. More so, it's about the exercise of separating the words subjective opinion from objective critiques in the best way that you can. That did not happen in Buyer Beware, Friday the 13th, the game. Although I stand by all of my critique, including how the game is overpriced, lacking content, horribly animated, and very one-dimensional, I am ashamed of how those arguments came across on my end. 
For the record, I believe that Friday the 13th, the game is a very bad game, and the game does not deserve to be commended simply because I fucked up. However, it does deserve to be judged appropriately by a neutral, confident, and fair critic. It does not deserve to be bashed in the way that I bashed it. Although I'm shocked to see how well the game is actually doing on Steam, I am happy for those that are enjoying it. As a gamer myself, I do have certain expectations going into a video game in 2017 that costs $40, and I do factor them into the value of the game. Those standards are certainly very objective. The game should be feature full upon release. The game should work, run well, and be properly optimized upon release. If not innovative or iterative, the game should be up to par with some of the best on offer in its genre. If online, the game should have stable servers that have been properly tested. And the game should adhere to basic industry standards like linked and smooth animations, an in-depth tutorial for new players, an options menu with an FOV slider and 60 frames per second standard. Friday the 13th the game failed at meeting each and every one of those standards and deserved to be called out for it. But not in a demeaning way, because failing to meet those basic requirements should have been enough to label it as a bad game. Deep down, I do want to believe that Friday the 13th the game was made to be a good product. However, sometimes it's just not probable when resource constraints, budgets, pressure from the community, and deadlines rear their ugly heads, and they sure did with this particular game. But it is possible many other games at the same price points have met those basic standards and gone way above. Friday the 13th the game did not. There's no excuse for it. It's not fair to this industry for this company to release an unfinished, feature-deprived game that lacks the finesse of similar games that cost the same amount of money. The point is, that's all I had to say in the original video because that is being objective and fair. I want to make a promise right now on this channel to never let myself get caught up in my own emotions again and act unprofessionally when presenting information for future games. Games deserve to be judged as objectively as possible. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the work I do on this channel, please subscribe to Downward Thrust and consider pledging to my Patreon at patreon.com slash downward thrust. Every bit of support certainly helps. You guys have an awesome day and we'll see you in our next video.